Hey everyone, welcome to episode number 63 of the Bill Podcast and in this episode we'll be going through Socket.io which is a framework based on WebSockets and it will allow us to do a lot of cool real-time stuff. So Socket.io, as I said, it's a framework, so it's very important to know the underlying technology, which is a WebSocket. It basically means uh, we can do full two-way communication over a single TCP connection. So as usual, let's go through a few links that will come in handy for us to understand WebSocket, starting with this Wikipedia page. Next, as usual, I highly recommend the Mozilla Developer Network page on WebSockets and they also have a few tutorials, so go through them as well. And next is the HTML5 rocks. Although it was written almost four years ago, I found conceptually it is still very relevant, so give it a read as well. Next is the standards, which is the WebSocket protocol. It is an RFC 6455. So Internet Engineering Task Force is a standards body and they came up and defined the WebSockets protocol. This is my very first RFC that I read and it was pretty informative for me to understand what is WebSockets. For example, as I scroll down, uh, there is a section on what are the challenges when we try to do uh, a technology that is not based on WebSockets and then it goes on to explain what this WebSocket does with a protocol overview starting with handshake and so and so forth so do give it a glance as well it did help me next is the can i use.com page this shows us the browser support and as you can see it is pretty well supported across all the browsers and finally the framework that is socket.io and this is the web page and we will be looking a lot into the documentation page later on when we build so let's get started with uh, WebSocket. So I'm here in about dot uh, about colon blank page and if I fire up the console here and if I start typing WebSocket there you see you will already see the prompt there. So it is available in every client in the browser. All right, so let's get started with uh, WebSocket and then Socket.io, which is a framework. So for the very first example, we will not use Socket.io just to see what's going on. So here I am in a completely empty folder and why don't we create the very first folder and we'll just simply call it say browser. So the very first thing we will do is create a client page and then we will also create a server page. So let's first create the client page. So I'm gonna touch and then client.html and let me open up the entire thing in sublime text so there you go and uh, this is basically a static uh, html page that will open up later so inside here i will simply have a script tag first i'll keep the html really simple and inside script tag i will define socket so the way you define is simply var socket and just now as you saw websocket was already available in the browser of our target chrome in this case so we will do socket and then we will give it a URL. So for WebSocket, the protocol is WS and then colon slash slash, just like HTTP. There is also a secure version, which is WSS. And for our purpose, let's just say localhost port 5000 that we will code it up later in the server page. And then we will simply do socket dot on open. That means when the dual communication with the server and the client is open, what do we do? And then we kind of define it has an argument event. And over here, why don't we do something really simple? Why don't we sort of every two seconds kind of send a ping? So this will be window dot set interval. And the first argument is a function and we will basically send a socket so we will say socket dot send and we'll be a little bit more verbose in what the socket is so we'll say ping from client and just to really see that it is sending every two seconds we'll just pass in date object and we will do this every two seconds so that was a socket on open why don't we now code up the server page so for this uh, we will say server.js by the way there are many programming languages that you can also implement to websocket for this purpose i'm just using javascript go ahead and use python ruby or any other programming language 
So over here for uh, creating our server, we will require a very simple module and that is WS. So why don't we go ahead and npm init first and I'll just keep all of these really simple. Yep, this is fine. And then I will do npm install dash dash save and it's called WS, which is basically WebSocket. So once this is done, Let's come back and here you will see a package.json file and uh, there you go, WS is uh, created with a version number. So why don't we code up the server.js file? So the very first thing we'll do var and then let's define it, web socket server equals to require ws.server. And next we will also require the HTTP module which comes natively with node and that simply require HTTP and finally let's define the port we can either pass in a node variable or we will simply keep it 5000 and this is of course the same as what we defined in the client let's also now define the server which is basically HTTP dot create server and simply server dot listen and then port and we will also create a WSS a WebSocket now, which is new WebSocket server that we just defined. And then we will pass in a server object, which is simply server as what we defined right here. Great, so why don't we after this uh, do a little console log and then say, hey, WebSocket server created. So after this, uh, just like how we did in the client side on connection, Let's also define the same thing on the server side. So WSS dot on connection. The second argument in this case is a function with the first argument, the WebSocket. So here, let's first uh, just simply console log and then say WebSocket connection open. And we'll do WS dot on. And here we will do on message. And we will simply console log whatever the client is sending us, which is simply message in this case. And finally, uh, one last thing we will do is what happens when we kind of close the WebSocket. So in this case, we'll do ws.on. The first argument will be close. And the second one will be a function. And then we will simply do console.log. And then we will just say WebSocket connection closed. So let's come back to the terminal and why don't we start the server with node server.js. And there you go, server created, which was basically this line here. And why don't we visit the client page? So for this, I will just open up the static page. So I'll just say client.html open in the browser. And let's just open up the console just to see what's going on. And hey, get, guess what? ping from client WebSocket connection open. So here you can see that the client is sending something to the server. So that kind of works. Now at this point you might be like, hey, this is pretty common, isn't it? User, we kind of click something and then we send it to the server. But now let's see the power of the duplex communication. We'll try to send something similar from the server back to the client. So for that, uh, let's create the object in the server. So similarly, just like how we had the interval from the client, let's create something very similar in the server side. So let's do var id and let's define it. So set interval and let's uh, similarly follow the pattern from what we did in the client ping from server and we'll just add new date and then simply we'll just send it ws message sorry ws send and then message and uh, this can be pretty much an empty function and why don't we send this every one second do we have to do anything in the client side oh by the way before we go to the client side on close we should make sure that we clear the interval so we do clear interval and then pass in ID, which is basically the name of the interval function that we created here. So now that the server is already sending something, the client needs to catch it. So for this purpose, we will go to the client and on socket open, so there are two things happening. One is kind of sending an event to the server and we will also have another thing going on, which is socket.onMessage. 
And this is basically where you catch the event from the server. And then uh, console.log event.data in this case. All right, so why don't we try it out? So previously, if you notice, uh, there were no console logs on the client. So notice what happens now. So I'm going to restart the node server. Ah, there is a little mistake in syntax, line 16, and there's an extra bracket. OK, so let me start the node server once again, create it. And why don't I refresh this page? So there you go. You have a ping from server. And at the same time, you have ping from client. So this is happening every two seconds, the ping from client. And the ping from server is happening every second, as you notice here. So this is uh, how the duplex connection is done. And as you can see, it's really fast. And uh, this can have a great application, say a chat, which is very useful. And of course, when I close the browser tab, you can see that the web connection, WebSocket connection is closed, is uh, printed out. So next, why don't we similarly do another simple example, but this time we will use socket IO. And once again, I'm in an empty folder. So let me do a very quick npm init to create the package.json file. And let's install the socket IO package. So npm install socket.io dash dash save. So once again, socket IO is built on top of web sockets, so it will have a lot more functionalities. So the very first file we'll create is once again server.js and we will later on also have client.html. So let's come back to our text editor, server.js. Right, so the very first thing we'll do in server.js is require and create uh, an HTTP server. So say var app equals to require HTTP and then create server. And after this, uh, we will define IO. This is exactly where we will require the socket IO package and we will pass in the app. And very simply, we will do app.listen and then let's do port 8000 this time. And uh, notice the words once again as I type the code, things like connect, emit, send. So they are basically uh, doing the connection, setting up the communication channel, and then they're sending something to the client or emitting something to the client. So we'll do io.on connection. That means once uh, it has a connection established with a client, function is the second argument. And here, this is here, uh, we will do socket.emit. Why don't we, uh, so when when we emit uh, a string or something like that, we need to call it something. So why don't we call it as alert? Of course, you can call it as message or ping, or alert or anything. Something uh, semantic that is useful for your application. So we'll simply say hello from server, maybe a smiley. And that's it. See how simpler it is. Uh, so that's what frameworks are supposed to do. It helps us with abstraction so that we write lesser code. So. Now we will create the client side of things. So in client, firstly, you will have to acquire the socket IO, the client side of things. Uh, if you notice the very first example, we did not acquire any uh, library for socket IO. So in this case, uh, where is the module located? The JavaScript file that we will acquire in the client side is it, it is located in node module socket IO and then you go inside node modules again. There is a client. There you go. Socket IO client right here. And we will get the socket.io file. There you go. This is the one that we will get. So let me just copy the path name and I will come back and paste it right here. So just to make sure I have removed the leading slash and that's it. So now that we have required the client library for socket IO, Next, we will open a script tag, and this is where we will start using the socket IO client library. So, of course, the very first thing we will do is require it, or rather define where is the server. So, in this case, it is localhost port 8000, as just we defined in the server side. Next, very simply, we will do socket.on. And uh, this is where it's kind of like open and it's uh, trying to see whether you're sending any uh, message from the server. So in this case, I will look out for alert because that is what I'm sending right here. It's called alert. 
And of course, as the second argument, it is a function that is actually sending in the data. And in this case, I'll just do a console log and then data. Why don't we try out this very simple example? So let me go on to the terminal and I will do node server.js. It's something really simple. And I will also come back here and open this up in the browser, open up the client.html in browser. And why don't I open up the console? And there you go. Upon connection, it will say hello from server. So that was a simple emit from the server on connection. So similarly, uh, why don't we try to connect to a few clients? In order to connect to a few clients and see the difference, we are going to just append a random string here. So not much changes to the code. So uh, socket on connection remains the same. But here, let me just create a var alert object. And that will be exactly this same string here but I'm gonna append some random numbers so math dot random that's it and it will basically pass on this so I'm gonna close the node server and restart it and I'm gonna refresh this page so there you go there's a random number here so there you see there's a random number here why don't we open this up in a few more tabs and guess what the random number here is different that means it is treated as a different client how about two more times and there you go, we have four clients here and the random numbers are all different. So in this case, we have four clients connected to one server. This time, why don't we try to emit something from each of the clients? So we will say ping from clients. So, so I'm gonna come here and uh, we are gonna add in a little bit of code. So here was on alert was something that we are getting from the server. So if you want to send something to the server, we will do socket.emit. And why don't we this time call it a click? Ping from client. Maybe a little person waving at you. And of course, uh, going back to the server, the server needs to catch it. So in this case, we will do socket.on and then click function. And then it has argument data, console.log data. Right, so let me restart the node server and come back to the clients here. So of course, as you can see, there's an error because, ooh, and the error changed because uh, of course the node server started. And of course here you see the random numbers once again. And uh, now when you come here and you refresh, let me just refresh all of them. Does it have any effect? And there you go, you see pings four times in fact from the client. Why don't we do something really similar like what we did just now, send some random value just to kind of note that it is from a different client. So I'm gonna come back here and define var click equals to, I'm gonna copy this exact thing, math.random. All right, so let me restart it. And I'm gonna, once again, you're gonna see them refresh hello from the server with a random value and there you go you see hello from client with a random value so there are four different clients lastly we are going to go through a very simple another event which is called on disconnect so basically when you close the browser or the clients get disconnected somehow there is an event and in this event, maybe you want to clear some timer, you want to clear some objects related to a certain client. This is inside this function is uh, what you're going to do. So for that, we will simply do socket.on and then disconnect. So here we will do console.log and then why don't we say one client disconnected. Of course, in this cases I'm just doing a console log but in your application it will be far more uh, complicated for in case a chat server it will be adding the string from one client back to the server and then giving it to the other participants and so and so forth so let me kill the server and let me restart it so of course there you see all the hello from the servers are right here and uh, yep we have a few disconnections already because I refreshed the page but uh, anyway uh, let me kind of like uh, clear the screen a little bit so that you can see what's going on. So now I am going to close one client and there you see one client disconnected. I'm going to close another one, another one disconnected. But uh, see what happens when I actually refresh this client. So I'm going to 
cause a refresh of course uh, this will be treated as a brand new client and we will also have a third disconnection and also a ping on reconnection so this is what a page refresh does so if you're storing some in memory states be careful of what to do with those so for this maybe you would like to store uh, the states in some reddish or um, memcache databases all right so that was a little example on how to use socket io let's go on to the very last example which is also using socket io and this is the concept of broadcast so let's say client initiates something but you want to propagate this to other clients that did not initiate it so for this uh, we will once again install a socket io which i will not go through the steps a package.json and an empty server.js and a client.html file so in the client we will have a little circle so let's create some css for it so circle and it will have a width of 100 pixel height of 100 pixel background border radius display and we will simply give it block so we will also display this circle and we'll give it a class of circle and it will acquire the CSS and we'll also give it an ID of circle just so that we can target it with JavaScript later on. I will also have a button and I will have an ID called blue just so that upon clicking this button we can change the color from green to say blue and of course the ID so that JavaScript can target it. So as usual, I will first require the socket IO client library. And this was under the node modules that we did earlier. And let's start writing some WebSocket code. So the very first thing, just like previously, we will do WebSocket and then we will call the server side, which is lying in the localhost port 8000. Why don't we define some variables just so that we can access them quickly later on so circle equals to document dot get element by id and then this will simply be circle and then var blue equals to document dot get element by id and simply blue great so now we will what we'll do is blue add event listener and the second argument will simply be a function and upon clicking blue, guess what? It will target the circle and dot style dot background. It will change it to guess what? Blue. So why don't we try this out? I'm just going to open this up in the browser. And when I click it, there you go. It's blue. So why don't we now create the server file? So the server file will be really simple. So I'm not going to type it out and I'm just going to copy and paste from the previous little projects that we did. And yep, on connection, it will say, hey, hello from the server and on disconnection on our, or on refresh, it will say client is disconnected. So why don't we try this out? So node server.js and let me refresh this. And there you go, client disconnected upon refresh. Why don't we, since we are testing out broadcast, arrange this in four clients once again. And there you go, here are the four clients. And, uh, and now what we want to do is when I click blue in one of them, it should trigger changes in the rest. But of course, currently it's not because we are not emitting something. So why don't we do that? So here, let's go back to the client once again. So on click, it will not only change the color to blue for the for the current client where we click the button it will also emit an event so we'll do socket dot emit here and let's uh, emit an event called color and we will pass in the color blue at the same time why don't we also take away the button so in this case it will be blue dot style dot display equals to none and uh, once it emits the color the server side needs to catch it so what we'll do before we describe the disconnect event, we'll do socket.on and then color. And what we'll do, we'll do usually what we did so far was socket.emit and then color. Why don't we do orange so that we know that this is something that is not coming from the socket that initiated it. So when we do emit, it will basically propagate it to all the clients. But we want to propagate it to all the clients except for the client that 
created this event on click. So in this case, we will do socket.broadcast.emit. All right, so once it is broadcasted, it will come back to the client and we need to catch it. So why don't we do that? So we'll do a simple socket.on color and then function color and we'll do circle.style.background. In this case, we will simply populate it with the color that is coming from the server. Great, so why don't we try it out? So I'm going to refresh all of them. All right, so let me click blue in one of them and there you see there is orange on all the rest of the clients except for the one that's initiating it. And also if you see the button is gone. So I'm going to click right here and yep. So this is how the broadcast works. So obviously there's a blue button missing. So what I need to do is come back to the client and when the server is received on color, I should probably put back the button to display. So let's try this one last time. Refresh, 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 refresh. So green is basically on connection. This is like a fresh client on connection. And when I click blue, it changes blue for the for the client that is initiating the event but it's changing to orange for the rest of them so let's try it here and yep it is changing to orange for the rest it shouldn't be displayed it should be blocked no button was still missing so I'm gonna refresh it one last time just to check everything is working so I click here and yep it's orange on all of them. I click here and yup, the button is in all of them and the rest of the broadcasted clients are orange. So I hope this gives you a very brief overview on what is a WebSocket and uh, hopefully you found it fun because uh, duplex connection, real-time application. There are lots of tutorials on the web on chat application, on games application. Go and try it out. But I hope this episode gave you what is a WebSocket conceptually. So let's go through some of the web links before we end. So like I mentioned before, there are many other WebSocket related frameworks. So do go ahead and try out these links. I've tried SockJS a little bit, Socket.io, and of course WS that we tried as the very first example. And if we go back to the HTML5 rocks article, if you scroll down, there are, like I mentioned, other implementations in other languages, Java, Ruby, Python, Erlang, .NET. So pick your choice of language and implement a WebSocket. One closing thought on WebSockets. So this is a real-time uh, use case. That's where you use WebSocket. But typically, all the clients, the multiple clients, will connect back to one server. So this is like a wheel and a spoke kind of arrangement. And uh, as we notice that the handshake happens, and then there is like an open bi-directional communication. And of course, the connection closes. There is this, another protocol called WebRTC that is also uh, up and coming. I hope to do an episode on this as well. And this is also used for real-time connection. But what is the difference? In this case, once all the clients have a connection to the server, the clients basically talk to one another instead of uh, the server. And this is uh, probably useful in, say, a video chat because you don't need to go back to the server for anything, but you just need to share the information, the chat, and the stream among the clients. So just take note on where you probably need a WebSocket kind of architecture versus a WebRTC. So it all, once again, depends on your application. And finally, for the build link of the episode, it goes to request for comments, which is RFC. Like I said, uh, I think uh, reading an RFC for the first time for WebSockets was tremendously fun and insightful for me. And I highly recommend picking up an RFC and reading it. It's really not too difficult as what I thought. So here is a list of RFC. As you can see, the familiar uh, names such as FTP, SMTP, IPP4. You pick up an internet or a web technology and go in depth and have a fundamental knowledge of it from the standards. And I've also linked to like what are some of the good RFCs. Of course, we cannot possibly read all of them, but there are some good ones that maybe a web developer or even a network engineering will uh, find it useful. There is also this Quora question as well. What RFCs and specs are useful for a web dev? 
And that's it for this week's episode of Bill Podcast. For the rest of the episodes, do visit build-podcast.com. Either subscribe through RSS, iTunes, Vimeo, YouTube, GitHub, or Twitter for your episode. And by the way, all these episodes are in public domain, so feel free to use it in whatever way you wish. And I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.